sins away it's because one day those that can sing and sing so well and happily realize that they were sinners understood that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for their sins spilt his blood down Calvary's tree down Calvary's hill and it's by that blood that all those sins are washed away. You see, this old world sees us full of fault, but the Lord God sees us as perfect and pure because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for your sins. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior this morning, I want to invite you to come to know Him today, and I pray that through song and maybe message, that you'll fully understand how much Jesus loves you and that he wants you to be his today. Brother William, let's at least sing one more verse of that. A dying thief rejoice to see
good stuff. We hope that you have made that decision to follow Jesus. And if you haven't, today we'd love to introduce him to you. Make him your Lord and Savior. Good to be at Westside today. Good to see all of you here. We've had a lot of folks traveling out of town, but several of them gotten back and came back. I know they came back just to be at church today, so <laughs> at least that's what we're going to what we're going to hang on to. Sister Jean's going to have to read into the minutes or write into the minutes. There is a fountain filled with blood because we got we didn't we didn't adjourn conference till we'd sung that. So make sure you get every verse just right, and, and then we'll next conference we'll have to have it read back to us. Uh, glad today we serve the Alpha and Omega. We were back in the back, and I said something about. Singing the Alpha and Omega, and Phil said, I, I know the Alpha and Omega, but what's that middle part? And I said, It's just all Him. It's just all Him today. Alpha and Omega, the beginning, ending, in the middle. And it, isn't He good today? Amen. Sing choir.
been a rough week, but um, our God is faithful. It's, uh, we say it all the time. As a Christian, you're, you may find yourself either in the middle of a storm coming out of one, or you may be headed to one. But I'm thankful today that we serve a Lord. He's the master of the wind. He's the keeper when we get in a situation we just don't know what we can do. We can't do anything for ourselves. He's faithful to take care of his children. And how I love you, Lord. Sing it. Oh, 
you to ask yourself a question. While I was kind of singing with them, luckily not loud enough that you could hear, it dawned on me that I don't love the Lord like I should. A hypocrite are we. We sing our songs, telling the Lord how much we love Him, but do we love Him like we should? So I'm going to ask the trio to sing that again, but it's not just a song, it's not just a special. Westside Baptist Church, it's an invitation. Do we love the Lord like we should? Are we yoked up to Him, connected like we should be? As they sing the song, I want you to ask yourself, do I love the Lord as much as I should? Can I say to you, the altar's open this morning. You just come as the Holy Spirit moves upon you.
Psalm 116. A familiar passage to Westside Baptist Church. The Lord sitting right there told me to go there again, so that's what we're going to do. Psalm chapter 116 says, I love the Lord because, I want to say this, and I confess this as sin in my life, that many times I forget to love the Lord because what he's done for us on Calvary's tree. You see, the first verse says here, I love the Lord because he heard my voice and my supplication, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. I remember when I was six years old, going to the Lord Jesus Christ, realizing I was a sinner, going to him and saying, Jesus, come into my heart and save me. And he did not hit the loser switch. He did not recline. He inclined to me, and he heard my prayer. I love him for saving my soul. I love him because he died on the cross for my sins. I love him because he resurrected. Church, I'm afraid we've gotten into the loving God for what he does for us. Well, I want to tell you, we need to love him for what he did for us. 2,000 years ago, he stepped off the platform of heaven. He stepped into the ugly womb of a sinner. He came to this nasty earth and was born in a barn. He was laid in the cow trough. He was worshipped, yes, that night, but surrounded by animals. He was not in the five-star hotel. He left the palace of all palaces, heaven and the throne room, the best that God had to offer. And he did it for you. And he did it for me. And when we lose sight of that, we grow cold and we forget why we ever loved him. And we're so busy, so needy. And I confess that I'm a needy person and I'm constantly going to God and I need this and we need that and this over here and that over there. And sometimes we, as Christians, allow that to cloud the love we have for him because the vision that we were once given, that we were sinners, and he was our Savior. We were without hope. He was our only hope. He didn't have to save us, but he did save us. And because of that, we said, I love him. I want him. Come into my heart and save me, O oh Lord. But now the grind of life is taking its toll. And we're asking and seeking. And if it doesn't fall in place like we think it should, we get angry. Come on, Christians, admit it. We get angry and bitter with God. And so we start being unfaithful because we become ungrateful for what he did for us 2,000 years ago. I can't, was it Phil Cross that wrote a song? It says, I don't deserve anything. How does it go? He does not owe us one thing. He did not owe you and I to leave heaven's portal, to be born into this mess down here. He did not owe it to you. He did not owe it to us. But he did it because he loved us. And I want to say, let's not forget, the Bible's very quick to say that we love him because he first loved us. He hung on the cross 2,000 years ago, beaten beyond recognition, blood flowing, water 
pouring out of his side. <clears throat> Having God the Father turn his back on the Son, the weight of the world literally had fallen upon Jesus Christ. Your sin met the sinless one. Jesus Christ was sinless. And as he hung there, your sin, my sin, fell upon Jesus. It was so ugly, so disturbing, that the Holy God, the Father, said, I can not watch. And he turned his back from his son, turned it from his son, turned it from our sin. And Jesus bared it all. That's why we once loved Jesus. I said that's why we once loved Jesus. You say, oh preacher, I'm tired. Oh preacher, I'm burned out. No, Christian, we're backslidden. We have forgotten why we love him. We are looking again. We're looking for action now. We're looking for him to do things here and do things there. And I thank God that he's a God that loves us and does help us through. I'm not suggesting that if we have a need, we should not go to God. But when He does not answer our prayers as we want Him to, and we find the bitterness becoming a problem, we're falling out of love with Him. We're forgetting why we loved Him in the first place. I love the Lord. The psalmist says, I love the Lord because. Remember? Remember when he heard your prayer? Can anybody here in the building remember when you fell on your face before Jesus and said, save me? Is there anybody that can remember? Remember that day that God entered into you took out that heart, heart of sin and put in a heart of flesh made a new creature out of you remember that Christian remember it and stay in love with God I love the Lord because I remember the day when the Lord saved me as the song says he says I love the Lord because he inclined unto me I love the Lord I love the Lord in verse 5 because he's gracious to me did you hear that he said he's gracious to me <clears throat> we're talking about a man Mr. David said I love you, Lord, because you're gracious to me. David had just committed the horrible sins of adultery. And to cap it off, he had Uriah killed. He had blood on his hands. He was a murderer. Anybody here ever murder anybody in cold blood David did David did it and yet David in his time of deep dark sin realized why he loved God he loved God because amen little one just threw up all over amen he loved God because God was gracious even after his conversion or salvation. Don't you forget, God's gracious. We're nasty sinners in this flesh. 
We're only redeemed because of him. We're made pure because of him. In his eyes, we are pure. In our eyes, we know how rotten we are. We know it. There's not one Christian in here that deserves to be alive right now. The things we've done, the things we've seen, the things we've said, the things we've thought, God should have killed every one of us. And yet we can love Him because He is gracious. I look around, I don't see a one of you starving to death. He's gracious to you. He's gracious to me. He's so gracious. He's so merciful. A lot of you, most of you, here are parents. And you know what it feels like when those kids get out of line. Come on, let's just be honest. Sometimes you just like to put them in a box, cut a hole in the box, then plug the hole in the box. <laughs> but God is gracious. He's a lot more gracious with us than I am with my children. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it is the truth. God should have cut me down, chewed me up, and put me through the blender. He should have been done with me a long time ago. And I hate to tell you to you folks, but he should have been done with you too. The only reason, the only reason he didn't just take you off at the knees and leave you to bleed to death. It's because of his graciousness to us. How can you not love God? That is that gracious. He says, I love him because he's gracious. Then he goes on to say this, I love him because he's merciful. You know, graciousness is one thing and I guess mercy is another but when you put the two together there's a difference I guess we could have mercy by not sending someone to the electric chair but sending them into prison for the rest of their lives and we can say we have shown mercy but when you put graciousness on top of mercy you know what you get forgiveness I want to say to you, sinner, God's gracious, and he wants to save you today. Today, this morning, last night, this week, I've said, God, I want to see somebody saved at Westside Baptist Church. I, 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 don't, I don't like us having dry runs. I want us to have to keep the baptismal pool filled up all the time. I'd love to have to dump a gallon of bleach in that thing just to keep the slime from building up. Amen. <clears throat> I mean, not even have a chance to drain it and put fresh stuff in. Just keep on dunking them, bleaching all. I want Jesus to save somebody here this morning. But Christian, I want you to wake up. We all need to wake up. We all need to fall back in love with Jesus. If we'll fall back in love with Jesus, I won't have to preach so hard. If we'll fall back in love with Jesus, I'll stop spending my nights in bed looking at a ceiling, worrying about where you are and what you're doing. If we'll just fall back in love with Jesus, pressure's off. No longer will serving be a drudgery or a problem. It will be a privilege. Amen. That's why, Christians, we should love Jesus. Every head bow, every eye close.
Do you love them this morning? Would you stand up, please? The question is, do you love them this morning? Is it possible, Christians, that maybe we've allowed the rough stuff of this world to beat us down a little bit, cause us to get bitter with Jesus? Is it just possible? Maybe we're going through a trial and tribulation and we even blame him for it. Come on. Come on, Christians. Be honest with yourself. Don't lie to God. This morning, you may say, preacher, I want that intense relationship with God I once had. I once was in love with him. I once served him at a level that I'm no longer there. I'm no longer there anymore. Every head bow, every eye closed, I'm going to ask you this. If you're a Christian, say, Preacher, pray for me. I want to love Jesus like I once did. Would you raise your hand? Thank you, sir. God bless you. Hands going up all over. God bless you. Thank you. The invitation's open for you, Christian. But this morning... I want to say to you, sinner, you've never asked Christ to come into your heart. Jesus loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that's you, sinner, that whosoever. We have a whosoever God, and he loves you. Whosoever. He loves you. This morning, if you don't know Jesus Christ and you say, Preacher, I don't fully understand it all. If you'll come forward this morning, we'll have somebody take the word of God and show you how you can be forgiven of your sins. You can walk out of this church pure in the eyes of God. You can be saved today. As we sing, please. The invitation's open. Let's go. Christians lost people.
Has the Lord been good to us this, this morning at Westside? Let's sit down, please, for a moment. Appreciate you being so attentive. I tell you, the Lord's good to us. Um,